Don't forget to check out the social oddities on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. T-shirts are now available to all our podcast fans. They're available in a variety of different colors and also in different sizes. Keep in contact, follow, like, and share. Let all your friends know to listen to the Social Oddities Podcast. It's the Social Oddities Podcast. Coming at you from five parts of the UK. All for one reason. The amazing world of wrestling. I've never seen a crowd so fired up, JR. They know what's coming next. They can't wait to get started, and neither can I. Hi guys, and welcome to this week's edition of the Social Oddities Podcast. My name's Steve, and we're joined today by co-host Chris. And our special guest today is none other than two-time Pro Wrestling Eve champion, Rhea O'Reilly. Hi, Rhea. Hello, how's it going? Fantastic, thanks. And again, thank you so much for agreeing to come on the podcast today. We did actually have a chat with a couple of people, and your name was bounded around an awful lot about someone you'd be very <laughs> to have a chat with, so welcome. Well, thank you. I do love a chat, so that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Well... I think a lot of the times when we look at the podcast and how we go about structuring things, mainly we're just here to have a bit of chat, see how things are going and really to see what you're up to at the moment. So maybe if we can start off to see, maybe you could just tell us a little bit about yourself and some listeners who might not be aware of your work. Right, sure. Yeah. Uh, So I'm Rhea O'Reilly. I'm I'm from Northern Ireland originally. I live in London now. I've been wrestling for about seven years. Uh, I wrestle you know, across the UK, Europe, America. Um, So, you know, prominently a part of Pro Wrestling Eve. As you said, I've been a two-time champion there. I'm a spokesperson for that company. Um, In America, obviously, I'm wrestling for Shimmer over there. That's sort of the big name. But, of course, I'm involved with a lot of other promotions as well, such as, uh, you know, Shine, Bellatrix, uh, you know, uh, and also I'm a, a charity fundraiser as well. So I balance out my life in interesting ways. I'm a massive nerd and a uh, begrudging marathon runner as well. <laughs> There's no harm in that. We're all nerds in our own way. <laughs> it's funny that you should mention about the, the, the charity fundraising. We actually had um, another Irish guest on last week in mm-hmm. Session Moth Martina. Oh, I mentioned that you were coming on this week and obviously she said oh no fellow Irish lass and we were talking about a few bits and bobs but she also was involved in charity so is that something that you've done since you've been in London or since you were over in Ireland? I mean it's something I've always been you know it's been a strong advocate for me that like you need to give back to your community and you're only going to get out of life what you put into it so it's been something I've always felt really strongly about and I've been doing charity work for a long time um, but as a as a job it's something that I've come across you know quite recently so it's it's very exciting and it, it's nice you know like I think even with wrestling it's something that's important to me is, is giving back to to the fans as well so I think it's just something about my mentality really fits that sort of area of work. Good stuff. And do you, do you want to give us a little bit of a shout out to the charity? So some yeah, abs- absolutely. So um, I work for the Big Issue Foundation. Uh, for people in the UK, you probably all know the Big Issue magazine. For, for people who don't know, uh, basically people who are in poverty or, or facing social exclusion, uh, they can buy issues of this magazine for £1.25 and then they sell on for £2.50. It's a great alternative to people, you know, to get money instead of like begging or turning to crime and it teaches a lot of skills about sales and everything and then what the foundation does is sort of really looks at the issues that got them there so things that they're dealing with like maybe housing or um you know simple things like needing to get photo id so they can get a bank account uh if they're dealing with addiction you know sometimes we get people to a doctor and they haven't seen one in 15 years so um it's a really cool place to work it's really exciting and it's really rewarding work as well and do you find that fits in flexibility wise with what you do obviously as a wrestler? Oh, absolutely. Like I think it, the charity sector is very supportive of, of people, you know, whatever they want to do. And and I think like obviously like the more wrestling I'm doing, the more awareness I'm raising about myself, the more I can talk about charities as well. And that's something, you know, I always have done. 
even when I haven't been working for a charity. So, uh, but yeah, they're they're all they all think it's really cool. They think it's really awesome. Like just this week, you know, I had to pop down to the BBC London to do a, a radio interview there, and then I told them I was doing a podcast tonight. They think I'm really cool, so I'm going to make sure that they still think that. <laughs> No, oh, because cool. so I did actually notice on your Twitter that you were you were down at the BBC. How did that go? Oh, it was fantastic. Do you know, do you know it was very cool. As we were walking in, uh, myself and Emily Reid, who who runs Pro Wrestling Eve, as we were walking in, Stephen Fry was walking out. Big fan girl moment for both of us. We were Amazing. like Stephen Fry, and then and then we got over that and we went and did the interview, and it was you know it was fantastic. It was really nice uh, to be given the opportunity to talk about wrestling. I mean, as you know, like women's wrestling, it's just getting a really you know, prominent space at the minute with things like Glow, with the women's tournament, with the film about Paige coming out. It feels like it's the year of women's wrestling. So, uh, you know, we just need to capitalise that on that and sort of get as much much exposure as we can on the independent level as well. Oh, definitely. Well, uh, we certainly will touch on a few of those things you've mentioned there because that's definitely on the agenda at the moment. But Chris, mm. have you got anything at the moment pressing for you? Yeah, well, it was just like you were saying about obviously the, the women's tournament coming up in that as well. Um, there's a lot of UK based wrestlers that have been rumoured to be going into that as well. So who who would you like to see in that tournament, obviously barring yourself? Well, I mean, I have a broken ankle, so I'm not gonna be there. <laughs> but um uh I mean Is this where so... we need to get Yuri Geller involved or something like that. I, I maybe. know, right? I know, right? It's like <laughs> it's just a big sub story of always me. Um no, but you know what, there are so many amazing women right now in this country, like uh I know she's not a native to here, but Tony Storm's a very big part of the British women's wrestling scene, and so it's fantastic to see her in there. Um, I'd love to see Nixon Newell in that tournament. Um, you know, someone like Kaylee Ray or Piper, if we're going to get a Scottish contingent in there. Uh, I mean, essentially, I'd like to see any member of the pro wrestling Evo roster in there. I think everyone does a solid job. We only work with women who we think represent women dress them well so anyone from that roster could go and be in that tournament and pick a lot of ours pretty much i think nixon's based out in, in orlando just now as well isn't she so that's maybe maybe it's something she's gonna be doing it's just maybe not been announced yet yeah well absolutely they've only announced a handful of the women so far so i i think you know there's definitely going to be some more announcements and and i hope there's going to be a few more you know there's going to be a few uk women in there so uh, yeah i think we're all excited to see when the next time it's going to be and see if our favorites are in there or or not <laughs> I'm, I'm obviously going to pick up the scottish contingent on that one as well there so <laughs> be good to see someone be see kaylee ray and viper and even sammy jane and all all those ones really that would be really cool to see well i mean well, i hate sammy jane she's the dead. well uh, yeah. but but I uh, but she is a like that aside she's a great wrestler and she would <laughs> represent the UK really well so like I think you know British wrestling seeing this huge like exposure all over the world right now and uh, and it's mostly has been the men I think this is going to be a great opportunity for for people to see the women are doing just as well if not better yeah, definitely, definitely. I'm, I'm looking forward to the tournament to see what they what they do and how it's presented as well. Yeah, um, I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah, having having someone like Lita commentating on it as well is going to be really big. And JR, obviously, is just so good at what he does. So yeah, absolutely. Definitely. Um, I was going to I was going to touch on as well because obviously having a look back at where you, where you, what you've done and what you've um, how you started off and everything. You you were trained for a little bit with Lance Storm. Yes, I did. Um, tell us a little bit about that. How did that come about and how, what what was Lance like? Well, I mean, I wanted to go and do wrestling training when I was 18 and it just didn't it didn't work out. So I went to university and I just was like, all right, go to university. And I finished uni and I was in a job I didn't really want to have. I was living somewhere I didn't if I really wanted to be there I was like it is time for an adventure so I kind of went to the <laughs> internet and uh, and sort of had a look and a new Lance Storm was running a school and then I looked it up and just went do you know what I fancy moving to Canada and training to be a wrestler and I tell you when I handed in that uh, resignation letter at work they did laugh somewhat uh, but um, I went and I had the most amazing experience you know uh, it was really great to be in that intensive sort of uh, training regime it didn't really exist in the UK at that time and 
And I don't think you necessarily need to train that way, but I was bloody terrible. So training every day, like and drilling it into into my body and getting my body to understand that, it was, you know, really great for me. And Lance was amazing. He's the patience of a saint. I don't know how he does it. <laughs> but um, you know, he lives and breathes wrestling and and is fantastic because he'll come in one morning and he'll be like you know I was just sitting last night and I had an idea for a gimmick for you and like he's just constantly he's got a wrestling brain he's got a great mind for it he can see where people can fit into the business really well um and surprisingly he's really really funny Uh, which uh, I think people are always like you know can I be serious for a minute and of course (laughs) he is very serious about wrestling but he's also hilarious and he's just a really genuine uh, person and he really cares about wrestling and like he still keeps in touch you know and he keeps an eye on what we're doing and and it's really fun you know he's fantastic you feel like when you meet people who've been in other classes even if they didn't train at the same time as you you're all part of like the storm wrestling academy alumni and you, you bond you make friendships with people you never trained with purely because you were both there and like you said, he still keeps in touch and watches what everyone does and all that yeah kind of stuff. so that's that's really cool as well yeah, there was a wee while back, there was a Shine show, and there was four women that had all trained at Storm Wrestling Academy on the show, all in different classes, and uh, of course he was tuning in. I think there was probably a bit of a drinking game to see how many times his name could get mentioned in a commentary, because <laughs> he <laughs> trained all of us. <laughs> and it was it is true you trained under was it Justin Roberts as well, and the and, and under the Knight family as well, was it? Yeah, it's Justin Richards, yes. Justin uh, Richards, sorry. Yes. Justin Roberts no, no. is ill. Yeah, that's, yes. the ring announcer, that's, sorry, that's, yeah. that's the ring announcer. Yeah, no, it's fine. Uh, Justin Richards Justin is like Richards, a big. Yeah, yeah he, he's been an, an amazing influence. So, yeah, when I came back to the UK, um, you know, I was training under him on a weekly basis. And, you know, he just did so much for me, like, uh, not just not just as a wrestler, but as a person as well. He really sort of instilled, like, some really great morals and stuff. And he was like, you know, a big thing with him was, you know, never to let wrestling change who you are. And I don't think it has, you know, I think I've stuck really strongly with my beliefs and, and my morals and stuff, which, you know, in any form of entertainment, it's very easy to stray from. Uh, so, you know, and uh, and his wrestling, you know, skills are, are beyond. Like, he doesn't uh, do wrestling training anymore. But again, he's someone I can go to at any time and just catch up and chat with him, whether it's about wrestling or life or anything. And, and the nights are the same, like... Uh, you know, I did some, I did a, you know, some training with them as well, and and they just all the thing all these people have in common is they care about wrestling and they want wrestling to be the best product it can be, and they want, you know, they 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 wanted to have this integrity and credibility within what it is, and and that passion shines through when you train with them, and it's you know, it's contagious once you you're being around them you you want the same thing so it's like the, the combination of you know all those strong strong like trainers it's it's just phenomenal and like you're working with the knight family um with the men that you would have been working with obviously page at some point as well um so or, or at least seeing page from a young a young age growing up and mm. becoming what she's became now so what what was that like as well Oh, I mean, she's amazing. Like, I think everybody knew she was a star from the moment they met her. Do you know what I mean? She just has that sort of energy about her. And uh, and I always, I always remember because, you know, she she got signed and then obviously get, getting her over to America was a, a bit of a thing. A thing. Uh, I don't know whether it was visas or whatever. And I kept going up to Nart to do the shows for Bellatrix. And I'd be like, are you still here? Would you not, like, buck her off to America already? <laughs> um, no, but, she, you know, again, she, you know, she really, she, you know, she's passionate about it. She wants everyone to do well. She wants everyone to have fun as well, because I, I think that is so important to remember in wrestling. And, and she's always been about that, you know. Um, she was actually over in the UK, uh during the last Bellatrix show, just hanging out backstage. And, and the great thing about it is at this point, you know, she's she's still there to impart advice if people want it and, and, and give them tips and, uh, you know, what works maybe from a WWE perspective. You know, she hasn't lost any of who she is. She's the same person, which is, you know, fantastic. Which is it's really good to know as well. She's went that far. She's still the same girl from Norwich, effectively. She's still the same person. That's really, that's really cool. Yeah, absolutely. And she hasn't got one of those weird accents yet. She still sounds pretty much like she did, so that's good. <laughs> <laughs> she hasn't been to America. No. 
<laughs> well, just funny when you're obviously touching upon um, being trained, and obviously Chris was asking about some of the people who's trained you. I was reading a, a few things on the internet which mentioned you've been involved with Progress and working in the Projo. How did that come about? Uh, I mean, yes, uh, I did uh, for a while. I was doing some training down there. We, we, we did some women's sessions. I mean, as soon as Progress announced that they were doing their first ever show I was straight on I was like hey do you need help what's going on because it was literally around the corner from where I was living at the time um so you know I I was um a big supporter of progress from the from when it very first started and and I got to know you know the owner as well so like you know talking to Jim and John and then John was opening the projo and and he said it would be really cool to have a female trainer Uh, um and so, yeah, for a little while, I was down there doing uh, women's training sessions, helping with beginners and stuff as well, because it, it could be, it, it's a particularly scary time sometimes when you're starting, um, not all women, of course, but so, some women, you know, are a bit more timid and a bit more nervous when it comes to being quite physical. Um, once you draw it out of them, they're fine, but it's getting there in the first place. So, you know, I, I try to like support women, encourage them to get in and push them to do the things that they might be scared to do. And, you know, I always love being involved in training. It's something, like, it's really important, you know, like, you know, you want everyone to be as good as they possibly can and you want to give back to the, to the industry that's done so much for you. Um, so, yeah, no, I love it. I love I love getting in there and, and helping people out at all sorts of levels. With you saying about intensity and things like that, obviously with looking at some of the pro wrestling Eve stuff that, that's produced, I'd say that that in itself is some real intense wrestling, whether or not it's male or female in the ring. It seems to be some some real good stuff that's uh, being put out there. Yeah, absolutely. Like uh, the Progress Training School has a you know an amazing set of trainers headed up by Daryl Allen at the minute, and uh, you know that's it. It's not just about like learning your moves and knowing how to do your moves and and your hold for hold wrestling like you've got to bring something if you get in the ring no matter how good a wrestler or if you don't exude intensity and confidence and a belief that you're going to be there no one else is going to believe in you either and and people forget that you know there's so many different sides to being a good wrestler it's not just you know, oh, I can do these moves. You've got to, you've got to present something that people want to invest in, whether that's to love it or hate it. Yeah, and we were when we were talking to Session Moth last week. Obviously, a lot, big part of her character is, a, as well as being good in the ring, is the comedy side of what she brings and the storytelling. Yes. I think some of that is really good in different promotions and and allowing wrestlers again be male or female to run with a character is what makes a good promotion. Oh, I, I would completely agree with that. And and especially, like, I think it is so great that people are letting women run with these kind of characters as well. Because I think for for the longest time, you know, women were, like, whether we like it or not, were this, like, sideshow attraction. And they were just there to be pretty and, and, and do whatever. And so the idea that a woman could be, like, a hardcore wrestler or a comedy wrestler or, you know, whatever, was just, it was just completely out of their sort of... Just, remix they would they they wouldn't they would be like no you can't do that you have to just be like a pretty girly wrestler and and it's so fantastic to see promotions are embracing that now and going you know you can be any kind of wrestler it doesn't matter what gender you are you can just be any kind of wrestler that you want to be preferably a good one <laughs> <laughs> well that's one of the good things with with the uk wrestling scene i think if you look back at say wwe in maybe the 80s you had quite a bit of a an upturn in women's wrestling for a time and then going into the 90s some of it kind of the bottom fell out i guess and until they kind of reinvented themselves and now we're in the women's revolution era but british wrestling women have been quite a focal point for some time now as well haven't they yeah absolutely i mean even so i mean i've been involved for seven years and to look at where i started to now which isn't really that long a period of time like the everything has changed it's gone a full 360 you know uh because just sort of before i got in we had the likes of uh, of jetta you know trips off to to shimmer and doing what she does so tremendously well but she kind of disappeared uh, along with all of her peers you know m- maybe like erin angel was around saraya knight was around but beyond that like women's wrestling was kind of at a stagnant point and then all of a sudden we all just started appearing and like to go from being like saying you were the only female trainee at a school 
now you know they're they're making up like a quarter of the trainees do you know what I mean or more which is it's really exciting and every time a female wrestler is doing well and and getting further and and getting more exposure inspires more women to do it as well so yeah we're, we're, we're getting an explosion of female talent in the UK right now was it only when you moved over to England that you first experienced wrestling or were you doing anything over in Ireland? No, no, I wasn't doing any wrestling over there. There was, I mean, I, I know there was, you know, Irish whip and stuff in the South and in, in Northern Ireland, there wasn't really much going on. There was one promotion and um, they just started doing some training pretty much as I was moving to England. So I didn't really get to do much there. It was like, uh, to actively get involved was definitely after I moved to England. Yeah, I was already a fan, but like to get actively involved in the the independent wrestling scene was after I moved to England. And what did get you into wrestling? Obviously, you've mentioned that you wanted to start doing it a little bit earlier. You went to university before you really decided what you wanted to do. Mm. What was the trigger? What was the hook for you? Well, I mean, I've told this story before, but I will tell it because I love it. But Trish Stratus is the reason I wanted to be involved in the wrestling business. Now, she came out with her wee, like, mini skirt and her cowboy hat and her tits hanging out. And she was, like, managing TNA. And I was, like, all right, here we go. We've got another bimbo. Brilliant. This is so good. And then they did that food with the Dudleys. And... Oh my God, I hated that woman so much. I thought she was such a dick. I just was like, yeah. I've had enough of her. I hate her. And then they had this like culmination match at pay-per-view. It was on Channel 4. And they, the backlash one where she got put through. The backlash the indeed. <laughs> Bubba Ray gets her up. Boom, through the table. I have never been so happy in my life to see someone get <laughs> through the table. And do you know what? It was weird because that was it. It was like, yes, yes, this has happened. And then a little click a minute later went, oh, my God, like a woman has made me have the same emotional reaction in wrestling that a man has had. And then it, I realized that, like, women had an important role to play in wrestling and I don't know if I wanted to necessarily be a wrestler at that point but I knew I wanted to be involved in the wrestling business um that that was that moment that hooked me and then of course I went on to discover things like shimmer um chick fight all sorts of things and saw what these women were doing outside of WWE uh and yeah slowly over time I was like man look at what's happening here I I want to be a part of it and and yeah I wanted to be a wrestler well, that, that that's really cool because I think if you look at maybe you're talking about before about the boom in women's wrestling, yeah. certainly on the, the UK scene, yeah. perhaps down to the rise of the internet and people having that exposure to US female only promotions, it can only help. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, I was I was sort of at the very end of tape trading, so <laughs> I had my VHS tape trading going on, and then on to like the the cds people be burning stuff uh, that you know you couldn't get anywhere it was really hard to get and then eventually the same with ECW. right and then and then eventually yes like we all got online it was fantastic and it was so much easier to access all this stuff whether whether you were ordering dvds which i was ordering dvds a shimmer starting at volume one and working my way through or you know or, or and, and now like it's even easier do you know what I mean every promotion seems to have an on-demand service there's no reason to not watch like whatever wrestling you're into or what promotion you want to see like it's it's so easy to access now uh it's fantastic yeah well I, I know Chris in particular will probably talk a little bit more Chris is a big ICW fan and, 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 and progress the same as myself mm -hmm. and I think one of the things that we like the most about those two specific organizations is the storytelling and I know the pro wrestling Eve is the same they allow storylines to develop and things like that and I think that's also a massive massive part to make a uh, promotion successful yeah absolutely do you know what I mean like everyone 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 loves a story do you know what I mean like uh, yeah. I'm not the first one to make this comparison by a long shot and I know some people don't like it but wrestling it's a soap opera do you know what I mean like it's yeah, it's a, it's it's and I mean that's what's brilliant about it you know the idea that you, you get hooked into these stories uh it, it, like it makes you feel forget about your life like if if you're just having a match 
yes, it's fun. It's awesome. You can cheer and boo. But if a storyline has progressed so far that you actually hate someone so much that, like, you want to throw your pint at them, <laughs> like, let's not do that because it's a waste of alcohol and it's not very nice. But the idea that that even comes into your head, do you know what I mean? And, and you can only develop these huge passions for people and these huge hatreds for people as storylines progress. Yeah, is that one of your plus points there, would you say, Chris, with ICW? Oh, no, definitely, definitely. Just, just like They've got long-running story arcs as well, which is a big, massive plus for me in ICW and, like you said, progress as well. Um, and... Obviously, as Rhea's saying, pro, pro wrestling league as well. So I think if if you if you tell the right story, and you become a more story based in it, then the fan wants to see more of that. So it's a massive, massive thing for me. Yeah, definitely. Couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. Well, Rhea, you've touched upon working outside of the UK, going over to Canada, learning your trade a little bit more, and obviously working with Lance. Mm. What are your aspirations moving forward outside of the British scene? Are you looking to maybe move abroad, you know, do things again outside of the UK? Well, I mean, right now my aspiration is to have my ankle heal so I can get back at the ring. Um, <laughs> like, it's... Did, the, did you injure it in the ring? Was it the no DQ match that you had? Or is it training? Yeah, so I had a, I had, I know I had a match with Sammy G, and it was next WA yeah. show of March. Uh, very start of the match, like it, it's one of those fluke things. Very start of the match, I was standing on the ring apron with a belt. She came out of nowhere, bam, in the back, I fell to the ground, and I just the fans are right up against the ring, and just the way I landed, unfortunately, I just it, it's a concrete floor, and I broke my ankle. Oh. Um, I didn't realize I'd broken it at the time, obviously, because I did the whole match. Um, you won, and I won. Yeah. <laughs> and then upstairs, <laughs> afterwards, afterwards, I was upstairs. I was like, my ankle actually it's really sore, and I just kept whining. And I knew I sounded like a whiny brat, but it was just getting worse and worse. And I was like, this really hurts, but I just ignored it because we were going out for like Nando's or Koda Abushi and Goda Ahashi and you don't say no so I was like oh I'm sure it's fine but oh my <laughs> god cold sweats of the night woke up the next day went to A&E and they were like yeah that is not good <laughs> so yeah broke my ankle it's still in two pieces it's not gonna heal so we're just hoping that all the ligaments and everything are gonna and cartilage is gonna heal really well and hold it in place um which it's looking good that that's happening at the moment I'm getting new scans on Tuesday so really my aspiration right now is is to get back in that ring I want my Eve title back uh, I want to be back at Shimmer uh, Shimmer you know it's, it's been my dream promotion to work for I, I was so lucky to get there so soon and I want to keep being back there I want to wrestle everybody um, and I just want to have a good time yeah is, is there any sort of timetable for a comeback or, or have the doctors gave you any timetable it is really difficult because of the nature of the injury. I really have to sort of play it by ear with each appointment. Um, my appointment next week is to assess whether I'm going to be able to take some impact on it yet. Um, I mean, I've only been off crutches for two weeks, so it's it's been long and it's been slow, but I'm hoping I'm going to get some good news on Tuesday. You know, I'd like to be back in the ring before the end of the year, so I just have to wait and see how it goes. Which is so frustrating. Oh, fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah. Fingers crossed to get some good news on Tuesday. We'll need to keep, yeah. uh, keep a little look on your social media to see what's happening. Yeah, definitely. Have you been pleased that uh, Emily's been giving you a bit more of a, you know, a bit more run as the spokesman or spokesman yeah. lady, even? Well, yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, I've always, uh, whether I'd like to or not, kind of, I've kind of developed into the face of Eve in, in some way, yeah. you know, as the champion and also just being passionate about women's wrestling and, and being passionate about. Uh, you know equality for all people and humans everywhere generally so you know it has been really fantastic you know as you know I haven't been able to wrestle I've still really been able to be involved you know um, I have been involved in sort of booking the the July show and, and looking at what we're going to be doing going forward it's been great you know getting out there doing things like the radio interviews uh, and and also um, I recently won a rising star award uh, as a sort of future uh, leader and role model for women within sport within wrestling oh wow that's um, amazing yeah, it's really fantastic. So I get to go pick up a shiny award in in a few weeks, and uh, and that's because of Pro Wrestling Eve, you know, sort of 
saying like you can be who you want to be you don't have to compromise anything and you can still you know do what you love be be strong be a woman be whatever you know whatever you want to be and that's really cool I was having a little look at some of the merch that Pro Wrestling he put out there, and oh, yeah. I believe there was a little bit of controversy surrounding one of the t-shirts. Yeah, just a little touch, but you know what? So, so for people who haven't seen it, you should definitely go check out our fantastic pile drive, a fascist t-shirt. It has a man <laughs> who isn't anyone in particular, Trump. Uh, it's not anyone in particular. <laughs> I didn't say that. Um, being uh, given a pile driver by a kick-ass woman. Um, and yes, this did give a bit of controversy. But you know what? The people that didn't like our shirt are the people we don't want on our shows anyway. So Did people ge- genuinely give negative feedback online about that? Because that seems pretty ridiculous to me. We got, we, got really neg- we got some really negative feedback online. We did have a few people contact us and tell us they wanted their tickets refunded because they didn't want to support wow. the promotion. Yeah. Uh, so... Yeah, that was that was really interesting. But actually, on the flip side of that, we had so many people who thought it was really kick-ass and awesome and came to their first e-show or bought their first piece, first piece of Eve merch because uh, they thought it was really cool. It's this thing, like, uh, Emily got really warned that, you know, you shouldn't, like, be really vocal about your opinions, whether that's her. She's a big feminist, you know, and she has political views. And, and a lot of us uh, uh, of us wrestlers do as well and you know you always get warned oh don't don't go too aggressive on your opinions because you're going to scare people off but you know what we, we want, only want people of a certain mentality at our shows so it works out really well for us it's pretty awesome it's commendable it's definitely commendable because you know if you look at for example progress you've got them almost coming a little bit full circle going from being counterculture to maybe becoming a little bit more mainstream with their involvement with WWE. Mm. Yourself stick into those core principles obviously shows that it's not always just about putting bums on seats, if you will, and selling various shows out. It's also about sticking to those core values. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I mean, that's what I was, you know, saying, like about myself personally earlier, but also that's, you know, why I'm such an advocate of pro wrestling, Eve, because like, we just want to put on like, in our heads, we had this dream of these shows and what we wanted them to be like, and, and this cool space uh, 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 that we could you know, fill within the entertainment industry. And that's what we want to do. And that's what we're going to continue to do, uh, whether people like it or not. And hopefully they do. And hopefully they keep coming to our shows. And, you know, we've always sold out by the July show. So people do love what we're doing. And we just hope that we can keep making something people love. Good stuff. And I'll just pop a disclaimer out there now. That certainly wasn't a dig at Progress Wrestling. Just before we go. Oh, no. Yeah, no, of course not. Anyone tweeting ourselves (laughs) about that. Yeah. I, I think, you know, I like, as I said, you know, I was at that very first Progress show and to see, like, where they started, you know, like, their song that they always play at all their shows, started at the yeah. bottom, now we're here. Like, to see what they've done is, it's just phenomenal. And I and I think they definitely played a big part in the boom of British wrestling. So, yeah, big, big props to Progress. Like, what they, what they do is fantastic. Well, just to kind of give you a bit of a background on ourselves, we met on the run-up to the last WrestleMania. We were part of a group, and we all met over in Orlando. And wow. what the show we attended was the Progress Show, their first ever non-UK show over there. Oh. And then suddenly decided that I seem to have developed a massive inclination towards women's wrestling after watching Tony Storm. <laughs> absolutely fantastic and meeting Dahlia Black and also Ginny as well all absolutely lovely women and I know Ginny's taking part in the latest event isn't it coming up with Pro Wrestling Eve yes she is indeed Uh, really excited I'm really excited to see this match because um, like uh, I'm a big fan I'm not going to say I'm a big fan of Ginny but I'm a big fan of her work Uh, her wrestling is fantastic she's a bit of a bitch Uh, but um, Her character is certainly. <laughs> I, think she like, I think she wants that to be the case, though. Definitely. Well, I mean, yeah, but uh, but like, uh, really exciting. And put her, you know, we're putting her in the ring with Emmy Sakura, who you know, a woman I know well. I've wrestled a lot. Uh, is a very aggressive, feisty, tiny, but strong Japanese woman. Like she's she's uh, uh, yeah, she she is expect the unexpected when you watch her wrestle. She's amazing. And, uh, 
you know, she's been wrestling for a long time and it's going to be really cool to see them go at it for the first time. Uh, like, I'm, I'm so excited I get to sit and watch that match. Will you be attending that, are you? And is it the 15th of July? 15th of July, the Resistance Gallery in Bethnal Green. Of course, I'm going to be there. Like, I'm booking these matches. I want to see how they turn out. <laughs> You're going to be the heel GM for the night? I am not yeah, the heel nice. GM. I am making what I think are good <laughs> matches for the fans. Like, do you know what? Like, that's it. Like, I am trying to be as neutral as possible. Just think about good matchups. But I do want to see Annie kick Ginny's uh, ass. So, <laughs> seeing uh, maybe Sammy involved in some sort of handicap match that involves hair getting beaten up, that certainly won't be anything to do with you. She is not in a handicap match, she is in a triple threat match. Uh, it just happens, so happens that she's wrestling both of the Owens twins, but it's a triple threat. That is not a handicap match. <laughs> just saying. I'm sure that was entirely coincidental as well. It, obviously. it really was. Like, you know, it just so happens they both got disqualified during the tournament. It could have been any match, but it was them. That's a, so. that's a nice, nice way of kind of dressing up a handicap match as a triple threat. I like that. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, let's have a, a little chat. I think a lot of the times, again, this is a wrestling podcast, as you know, but we do focus often a little bit too much on the nitty gritty. Tell us a little bit about some of the things that you've described yourself as a self-proclaimed geek. Tell us what makes you a geek and what, oh. what you, tell us a bit about your interest in it. Again, you know, a little bit more about yourself. Oh, talk nerdy to me. I, uh, I love, I'm a big comic book geek. Uh, I, I, I'm, not so much on the Marvel DC side of things, but I'm a big fan of a lot of the independents. Um, I'll throw some stuff out for people that like Ed Brubaker is my favorite comic book writer, huge fan of his uh, and the, the artwork by Sean Phillips. Like they complement each other so well and I will read uh, everything they put out ever. Um, I, I'm a huge Neil Gaiman fan. So the American God series has been sort of at the, the top of my list uh, recently. Um, holding my breath not quite Pardon? is that the new tv program that's coming out yeah right? yeah it was just on amazon prime it's just finished yeah. all the episodes will be out now fantastic so good it's so exciting anytime i get to see like neil gaiman doing something in the mainstream makes me me happy uh because everyone should know his work and it's phenomenal um i i'm a big star wars fan i went to star wars celebration for the first time last year uh, I'm a big horror nerd. I go to Fright Fest, which is uh, one of the premier horror film festivals, five days of horror films uh, in London, in Leicester Square. I do that every year. Um, I, I just, I like a lot of stuff. I'm a, I am I wouldn't say like there's one niche thing, but I love all of those things a lot. <laughs> they suggest that your room may well be full of memorabilia of certain types of things. I, I mean, yeah, absolutely. I, I like, like, I think every human going right now, I have, of course, some lovely Funko Pops, but I have like the weirdest combination. I have like, I have, I'm just looking now. I have like a Game of Thrones one, a Star Wars one, a Preacher one, and then I have like Saved by the Bell, Breaking Bad, Adventure Time. It's all going on. I got some anime stuff, um, and I've got like Silent Bob watching over everything. So. <laughs> There's a bit of everything. One of my favorite things that I have, though, is like a, I was at the perfect age for Buffy, so I'm a big Buffy and Angel fan. There's a there's an episode of Angel where they, he gets turned into a puppet, and I have that puppet. And oh, I, it's, it's one of my favorite things, especially because his nose is detachable. <laughs> that <laughs> Which, sounds pretty scary, to be fair. I'm trying to remember that episode. Oh, it's called Smile Time. It's amazing. Maybe what I'll do is when you upload the podcast, I'll post a picture of me and my angel puppet. Definitely. <laughs> um, but uh, I really want to add to that collection as well because, uh, like, being a horror fan, like, uh, I know some people think it's real slapstick, but I've loved the Ash vs. Evil Dead TV series. And in season two, there's a Ash puppet, and I, I really, really want it. It's amazing. <laughs> Is there many of them out there then? Does the Funko make ranges for stuff like that as well? Funko, don't make, Funko don't make that. That puppet isn't made by them. It's just Okay. Yeah, it's coming out and I think the puppet's coming out in August and I'm like, I need to own it. It's the most ridiculous pop, like piece of memorabilia that you can have that I need You'll it. Definitely post some pictures on that when you buy it. 
Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> One of the things that as we mentioned of being a big fan of uh, Buffy, I believe, is it Alison Hannigan? She's going to be at the London Film and Comic Con. I saw advertised a couple of days ago. That's not a million miles away from yourself. It's not. Yeah, no. Um, and you know what? I've never actually met Alison Hannigan. I've met a lot of people from the show uh, because I, I do like heading to a little con every now and again. Uh, so, um, yeah, it would be really cool to meet her. I won't lie. Um, she's I only hear amazing things about her from people that have met her. So, yeah, with, I'm a big fan of comic cons. I go to the local one near myself in Wrexham. I'm based on the world, and there's quite a few wrestling guests and also guests of different TV shows. But it's just good oh, to go and have okay. a good laugh and see people and all the cosplay and things like that. Do you ever get involved with any of the cosplay stuff? Well, it's funny that you should mention cosplay. Um, I haven't cosplayed for a con uh, yet. Uh, however, um, uh, the ladies of the Square Circle are organizing a cosplay women's wrestling calendar, um, and okay. it's going to be coming out. And I may or may not be doing a photo shoot for that, so that's going to be really exciting. And uh, I, I, yeah, I'm not going to say what I'm doing. I don't think I meant to even announce that I'm in it, but whatever, it's out there now. <laughs> um, so I'm really excited to do that. Um, but aside from that, like uh, I do go to run. Uh, there are races at Disney sometimes. So I go to Florida with some of the rest, my wrestling friends. And uh, we dress up for all of those races. So I do those with Lexi Pipe. And uh, I have forgotten her newly crowned WWE name, but Kimberly uh, yeah. just got her wrestling name uh, for WWE. And I've forgotten what it is because I'm a terrible friend. But we uh, have done many races. And there are pictures online of us dressed up in a variety of Disney costumes. Uh, so running cosplay has been something I've been involved in. As a so if listeners want to check that out, they need to head over to your social media pages. Oh, yeah, absolutely. There's definitely some like pictures on there. <laughs> well, that's pretty cool. So going over to Florida and obviously so, being in part of, um, you know, being friends with lots of different people around the world must be good. Making lots of contacts already. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, you go on holiday, you got somewhere to free to stay wherever you go. <laughs> no, uh, it, it's a blessing and a curse of the wrestling industry because you do make friends from all over the world and it's awesome. But then it means that you have these awesome friends that do live halfway around the world and you don't get to hang out maybe as much as you, you do. You know, one of my best friends is Leva Bates and she's based in Florida. And, you know, so we get to hang out a few times a year. But, you know, we know if we lived in the same city, we'd be hanging around like every day you know so <laughs> so well, um, it's a blessing in a person but it's mostly awesome yeah it is funny that you should mention lever one of our co-hosts is a chap called adam who oh, most geez. weeks most tries to get in a bull nakano reference which i will do today for him because he loves her so much but his second favorite women's wrestler is lever and we oh, are desperately you. trying to get her on the podcast so any positive word, so Adam will be the happiest man around, would be most appreciated. So basically, when I get off with you guys, I, I should uh, send her a little message to be like, hey, you should totally do this podcast. <laughs> I would never ask you to do something like that. You should, you should do so, we'd be most appreciated. Well, I'll, I'll see what I can do. She's a busy Just woman. That. I'm sure she is. I'm sure she is. Well, I think we, we did have a couple of questions. I don't know if you noticed on social media, we did post out there a couple of things and a couple of people did come back to us. Sure. So I will just ask a question that came up fairly recently, if you bear me two ticks. One of them was from a lady called Jessica who wrote to us saying that she was a big fan of Pro Wrestling Eve and wanted to know what, from your perspective, was your best match to date. Oh, uh, that's, Probably my second match with Emmy Sakura. Uh, so that would have been in the, what was that, February show this year? Yeah. Okay. Just prior that, to you getting that's injured. That's my bet. That, yeah, just prior to me getting injured, which is so frustrating. I think it just, you know, <laughs> but but my second match with Emmy Sakura is probably my favorite, or, you know, my favorite match um, from Pro Wrestling Eve, with a close second definitely being Nikki Storm, or Nikki Cross, as she's known now. I know Nikki's a big, well, Chris is a big fan of Nikki, even aren't you, Chris? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Like, big fan of all the Scottish ones. So. Uh, I'm a big fan of beating her up. She's a tiny, <laughs> Scottish woman, so, you know, good. 
I think she's doing really well as well on NXT at the moment, you know, having title shots and things like that. It's impressive. She's come a long way in quite a short space of time over there. I couldn't be happier for her. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, she's one of those, she really deserves it. Not that anyone doesn't, but like, she really deserves it. She works really hard. And as mental as she is, it's really exciting to to watch. And, you know, I want her to do really well. So I'm, I'm, I'm always cheering her on. Although it's kind of scary also to boo Asuka because she'd kick your ass. <laughs> Are you a big fan of Asuka? I think for Nikki Bella, it's good, it's good to see, so it's good to see Nikki and like the complete basic 180 from our like, best in the galaxy type character to what she is now as well, I think. Yeah, she's so diverse and, and that and that is really, uh, you know, fantastic. And yeah, I, I'm, I'm pretty much a fan of all the women in NXT uh but yeah I ask her you know you know I, I saw her you know do I never got to wrestle her but you know I did see her do a lot of work on, on the indies at shows I was at before uh before she was in WWE as well and it's so cool to see I see that on such a large platform too I'm still not 100% sure that I can forgive her after she stole my moment to see Ember Moon do a finisher at NXT TakeOver <laughs> Orlando <laughs> Well, I was so looking forward to that, and it was absolutely ruined, and I'm, I'm, yeah. I haven't got over it. I'll be honest. Well, I mean, it's an emotional moment, but I mean, it just means you're going to have to go see her again, right? I know. And then I went to the NXT tapings at Full Sail, and I thought, okay, we've got a couple of weeks of tapings here. We're going to see her again. And Ember was injured, so all in all, it was not a good. No. Good time. Well, she'll be back, and she'll you'll be get back. to see, back. and you'll see her, Thank and it'll be awesome. <laughs> no, I'm a big fan. Big fan. I think she's done fantastically well because I know she she had a, quite a lot of tryouts. I think she had like five tryouts for NXT or something like that prior to actually getting signed up, and it just shows that persistence obviously pays off. Right, absolutely. Yeah, she was involved, I think, in Booker T's training school in yeah. Dallas, I think, and obviously shows that not necessarily who you know, but also getting that foot in the door just to get get a you know, route in there really does help too. Absolutely. Well, yeah, well, another question that came in was from a man by the name of Michael. Michael, I think, must have been having a little look at your social media. He <laughs> said that, noticed that you've been posting quite a lot about Glow recently, the new Netflix exclusive program about female wrestling. And he said he thought it was brilliant and wants to know, is there any aspects of that TV show that come across as it would be like being a female wrestler? Obviously, give or take 30 years down the line, but what you would see from watching the program. Right. Well, I mean, that's the thing. Like, everyone's got to remember, and maybe not everyone knows, but Glow was a real thing, you know? So, yeah. so like, Glow really happened. And there's an amazing documentary that I, I strongly recommend anyone who's watched the show, or even if you're not interested in watching the show, but you like wrestling, go check out that documentary because it had me in tears at one point uh, when I originally saw it quite a few years ago. Um, I was really excited for this TV series, you know, it is really cool. I think obviously the experience they had was uh, very different to the experience we are having now uh, in wrestling the way it is now. But I think the chaos and the, the last minute things changing and going wrong and the nerves of going out in front of an audience, uh, you know, uh, all those things are definitely relatable and there, there's definitely moments when you're watching and you're like, oh my God, yeah, like I've had a moment like that. Uh, but it is, it, it is a TV show and it is entertainment and it is different from what's going on. Um, but I loved it. I thought it was really great. I really enjoyed it. I binge watched the whole thing. Uh, and you know, pro wrestling Eve has the glow seal of approval because Kate Nash, who plays Rhonda, uh, came down to not one, but two of our shows, she came to a whole weekend of shows, bought a shirt uh, and uh, and was championing championing us all the way. So yeah, Brilliant. it was two thumbs up for Glow. I've only I, I think I watched four episodes last week, and I've just been chock a block. I haven't had a chance, but I was really enjoying what I was watching. Yeah, it's great, really and I think it just show. it just gets better as it goes too. So it's fantastic. It's something I'm looking forward to definitely. Well, glad that obviously you watched that because maybe you can give the listeners a bit of an idea on one of the characters in there being Karma, Amazing Kong. Yes. I honestly didn't know it was her. I, I've got to admit, I was three episodes in, and I had a little look on IMDb, and I could not believe it was her. Well, I can tell you something better. I knew two of her friends that didn't recognize Recognize her in the trailer. Wow. <laughs> so, so I mean, like she's, and then all of a sudden, as, as soon as I pointed it out, they were like, 
Oh yeah! Oh my god! So yeah, I think it's I really how that fantastic. even came about. Huh? Because uh, I wonder how that even came about. Because obviously, with her character in inverted commas in wrestling, I wonder who pr- asked that question. Would you like to be part of this TV program? Do you know? What, I, I wonder wouldn't... how she came in. I have no idea. No idea. But obviously, do you know what? Wrestling's a small world. And, yeah. uh, you know, everybody knows everybody in some way. There, that's 60 degrees of separation in, like, the world. It's about two in wrestling. Every, everyone knows someone who knows some, the next person. So, um, you know, but it is. it was so fantastic to see her be a part of it. She's looking amazing. She's brilliant in the show. Uh, and, yeah, there's a lot of other little wrestling cameos along the way as well. So it's definitely worth keeping an eye out for those. Uh, oh, the- I have read about quite a lot of the people that are going to be in it. I believe there's a good scene in one of the events. Is it Christopher Daniels versus Frankie Kazarian? Yes, indeed. They were there. So it was very cool. I think, I, and I do believe Christopher Daniels might be wearing some curry man uh, tights. So <laughs> I could be wrong, but I was like, I think he's wearing curry man gear. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, it's it, it was cool to see. And, and obviously, um, there's a really nice little spot. Um, uh, I don't know if everyone knows, but uh, Chavo Guerrero was really involved with the training of the women for the show. And the gym where they train actually is called Chavo's, which I thought was really cool. Yeah, that, I did wonder that. So is that where the link comes from, is it? Is that yeah, where they, yeah. Oh, not. Not to Chavo. Yeah, it's a little, little nod to him, yeah. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Okay, well, obviously on to the, the whole thing of, of wrestling again. We've had a little chat about yourself, a little chat about geekdom, as it is. What are you looking at now? Again, we've talked about moving abroad. We've talked about you doing various bits and bobs. Is there any particular UK promotions outside of who you wrestle for at the moment you'd like to be involved in? Is there anyone other than maybe the obvious to jump out, people you've been you know, recognising lately? Do you know what? There's there's so much up and coming stuff at the minute, and there's been new promotions popping up. And the heartbreaking thing is, you know, they have been in touch about, it and I've just been like, I really want to come wrestle, but I'm broken. Um, so, I mean, at the minute, to be honest, like, uh, you know, I want to wrestle everywhere. I want every weekend to be busy. I want to be wrestling, you know, here, there, and everywhere, all over the country. Uh, whether that's wrestling, you know, uh up-and-comers and and helping new girls in their early matches or wrestling the likes of, you know, Kaylee Ray or or Viper or Sammy Jane or whoever, you know. Um, I want to be everywhere. But right right now, like, I can't... Until I know when I'm going to be back and how well this ankle's going to heal, it's really hard for me to sort of put down pinpoint goals. My focus right now is to get healthy and strong so that I can come back and be the best wrestler that I can be when I'm back. Um, so I know that's a bit of a cop out, but it is really how I feel right now. We'll let you off. How has it been to obviously stop wrestling from, from such a point where having such a, an injury like that to stay in shape? Have you been able to do some other cardio bits and bobs in the background? It's, it's been horrendous. I mean, like I said, I've only been, <laughs> I've only been off um, crutches for two weeks. Um, so yeah, like, uh, I only, I, I've been trying to eat well because I really haven't been able to do much. Uh, I, I've just, you know, I, beyond walking, I haven't really been able to do much, much movement and stuff. I've just started using an exercise bike, which I'm cleared for. Um, that was causing me a lot of pain, but now I'm pain free. Um, but you know, just hitting some weights and stuff where I can and and just trying to eat well and, and stay in, in semi-decent shape. (laughs) um and it is tough but it is really hard because like not only my arrest so like I said I'm a runner um you know I've had to pull out of a whole bunch of races uh and and so you know I've I lost all of that as well so I'm just itching to get back to it full steam but I have just I've just been back in the gym uh the last couple of weeks I've been trying to post a couple of photos on Instagram as well so people can see that I went there and see that I'm not in too terrible shape right now always a work in progress no, it must be difficult as well because when you've got that kind of momentum behind you as well for to suddenly halt from such a thing as an injury, which you obviously can't help, in a match that you won must be pretty soul-destroying. Oh, it is. I like, it's heartbreaking. Like At first, I just thought, I didn't think it was that bad and then to be told mm. that it was really serious and I might have to have surgery and, uh, and also that it could 
at one point they were looking at it and telling me I might not be able to wrestle again and then very quickly changed their minds. Um, so it's been a bit of a roller coaster. And, you know, it's like anything. If anyone has anything they love in their life and to have that, like, taken away from you um, really sucks. And, you know, having to hand over the belt, it, it sucks. Like, <laughs> it's like something you've worked really hard for and then it's just taken away. Um but, you, you know, you, you kind of have to have that little pity party and then you have to get over it because you've got to move on and you've got to get on with your life and you've got to be doing other things until you're ready to get back in that ring. And you've got to make sure you're doing all the things that you need to do to get back in that ring. And you can't do that if you're eating a large Papa John's all to yourself every night. So you got to get over that pretty quick. <laughs> Yeah, you've got to mix things up with like dominoes and things like that every other night exactly. as well. Exactly, that's what I'm talking about. He has the best offer. That's where we got to go. Yeah. Or all <laughs> other good participating pizza stores out there. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it would have been good, obviously, with not good being injured, but the fact that you've been able to throw yourself into other areas, like you said, you've been now like spokesperson for Pro Wrestling Eve, involved in the booking and keep yourself involved in that. That would have helped yourself out, kind of get by it, I suppose. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like, Pro Wrestling Eve's been, been so helpful that way. And I also, you know, I do have to give a big shout out to Bellatrix as well. You know, I've been helping um, backstage at their shows as well. And, you know, to, to, to contact them as well and go, hey, I can't wrestle. I broke my ankle. And then to be like, we still want you here. It's really important that you're a part of our shows. Um, even if, you know, that's it's a backstage role, like, you know, to know that you're important to the the integrity of that show and to the running of that show, you know, it's, it's really amazing. So, you know, I have to thank them as well for, for really still supporting me through this and, and letting me still be a big part of their promotion. If there's anyone out there who might be listening, obviously getting into the wrestling business at the moment, things like injury is obviously hard to overcome. What words of advice would you give anyone who might be listening? who wants to get involved in, in wrestling for be that a woman or, or be it a man. I think like okay, most places won't let you train until you're 18 now, and I think that's a really good thing. Some places let you do it at 16. I think like if you're having to wait till you're 18, you know, get in the gym or you know, get into some martial art, something you know, like judo or or whatever that that's gonna sort of prep you for. Uh, uh, sort of the physicality of things once you're old enough to get to a training school like research training schools like look at where's good uh you might be lucky enough to live right by somewhere that's amazing but just because you're right by a training school does not mean it's a good school um so look at who's doing that training look at who trains there look at who's come out of there um and and do you know take it seriously seriously and, and and a big thing and i can't stress it enough is like when you're training if you get hurt take the time off to let yourself heal properly. Uh, one of the things that breaks my heart the most is that when I see someone who has potential, who maybe gets hurt at, at training and they kind of just brush it off and they keep going through training and it ends up being a bigger injury that means maybe they never even get to wrestle. They never get beyond training because they didn't take the time off to heal. It's so important to listen to your body. You only get one and and you're gonna have to live with it for however many years you're gonna be alive you know like after you finish wrestling you still have to get around and I think that's so important um uh, yeah so definitely that's a big important thing with, with you saying there as well about letting the body develop I think if you look back you were talking earlier about Paige someone who was involved at such an early age doing mm. so much I think, you know, being a like a 10-year vet at the age of 23 or something like that, where she'd been involved in so much, it must take its toll on the body after a period of time. Well, absolutely. I mean, you know, we don't have a lot of wrestlers going around, maybe uh, who start so young, but you only have to look at people in, in other disciplines like 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 um, like professional dancers or, or gymnasts. And yeah. their, their bodies are destroyed because they start from such a young age. Um so it is something to think about. I, I think it's important to think about, you know, your health and well-being in the long run, whether that's your body or, or also obviously a thing that is controversial and people always talk about is head injuries and, and like concussions are not taken seriously enough in our business. And, and if anyone ever thinks they have a concussion, whether that's in wrestling or outside of wrestling, like take it seriously, get yourself checked out, look after your brain because it's like one of the most important things you can have. I know we've got really serious all of a sudden, but it is really important. And 
And I, I think, you know, awareness is rising, but I think that people have to remember that like getting into wrestling is awesome and it's brilliant, but it is dangerous and it does play a heavy toll on your body. And you have to, you know, make sure that you look after yourself as well as you can so that you can do the thing you love for as long as you can. Well, when we were speaking with Donovan Dijak last week, it's it's funny that you should mention that as well because he, I believe, is a member of something to do with the concussion awareness over in New England. It yeah. just obviously shows that it's becoming a lot more prevalent now. Wrestlers are being more aware of the risks. And you have people, I suppose, on the, the big scale, someone like Daniel Bryan, who's mentioned before that he's had you know, umpteen concussions and yeah. he's been forced to stop doing what he loves. And there's probably people out there working injured at the moment who really don't want to let on what sort of serious conditions they might have because they don't want to lose that spot. Yeah, absolutely. And I and I think that used to be a big fear um, of, of losing your spot. But you know what? The fans, fans, yes, fans are fickle, but they're not as fickle as they used to be. And, and I think um, any promoter who's worth their weight, you know, like they're not going to stop booking you because you got injured. They're, they're going to respect you and respect your body and give you the time off that you need and bring you back when you're ready because they know you're an awesome wrestler and injuries happen. And uh, and I think the more we can get that mentality within wrestlers and promoters equally, uh, the better off we're all going to be as a business. Have any of your friends ever suffered anything like that? Obviously concussions and things, but suffered maybe confidence crises about not wanting to stop and giving themselves a rest. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think uh, any, uh, pretty much any wrestler who gets injured goes through that. Um, it, it, it's it's definitely prevalent and and it is a shame uh like i said because you know i you know i really think you need to look after yourself so but uh, but i understand it as well because especially if you're like you know top dog at that time and or you're on your way up and you've got this momentum building the last thing you want to do is take the time off from that and it is really hard um so i understand it but i also just you know care about people's well-being <laughs> I think that's what you've got to do it's all about the bigger picture nowadays and before we, we were talking a little bit about um, wrestlers starting a little bit later in the career and some schools looking at developments I know there's a, a young lady wrestler is it Millie Redding or Millie Reading mm-hmm. who's out there at the moment and I think she's just turned 17 and I, I've watched some of her stuff and she's really good and it kind of just shows as well that if you do start that little bit earlier do people think maybe you've got that little bit of an edge over people starting a little bit later in the career? I mean, you can say that, like, potentially, but, um, like, uh, you know, I didn't start wrestling until I was 24, and neither did Rosemary in TNA. And, okay. Uh, well, look at her, do you know what I mean? She's doing Not working trem- out badly. She's, she's doing tremendously. So yeah, I think it's about... I just think it's about the attitude and the mentality you go into wrestling with, irrespective of what age you start doing it at. Yeah, because uh, from listening to, again, being fans of other wrestling podcasts, you often mm. listen to some of the guests and they talk about some of the things that they've done growing up and not necessarily just getting in the ring. It's the amount of time that you spend on the mats, the amount of time that you spend learning the concept and movements and things like that. Maybe at the very least, that could be built as a martial art or some sort of training. It doesn't necessarily have to be full on contact. Oh yeah, absolutely. There's so much you can do. Like that's it. I mean, amateur like amateur wrestling is a great. You know what I mean? Like that I was saying about like doing things like judo and stuff. But also, yeah, yeah it's it's learning that physicality. Uh, you can be doing character work and working on your promos from like whatever age you want to be. You can be in the gym getting strong from whatever age you want to be. Um, and you can be studying and watching wrestling forever too. So there's a lot of stuff that you can do in preparation for actually getting in the ring. And taking those first bumps. Do you have any regrets starting at the age of 24? Do you wish you might have been able to start a little bit earlier, or you're happy with how things have gone for yourself so far? You know, I could I could go back and go, oh, I wish I, you know, started my wrestling career when I was 18. But I think like the experiences that you have in life bring you to be the person that you are. And maybe if I'd started younger, uh, you know, I'd have missed out on a lot of the opportunities I've had. So. You know, I, I'm really, I'm really happy, and I'm really proud of everything I've done in wrestling. And I, and I think it was the right time for me. Uh, so, 
no, yeah, I think there, there's no point in, you can't go back and change it. So what's the point in regretting it? Yeah, definitely. So if you could go back and tell yourself, give yourself any pointers, would there be anything that you'd look to change that you've done so far in your career? Uh, I'd probably tell myself to get my ass in the gym a lot more <laughs> from when I started. <laughs> um, and, and just to believe in myself um, because... Is, it's a massive confidence business at the end of the day right absolutely because like do you know what a promoter's not going to book you if they think you're terrible and you just have to like i think that's it you know if you're getting booked for a show someone thinks you're at least half decent so <laughs> just believe in that and have that faith in yourself like there's a difference between that and having an ego and i think finding that nice balance like yeah just just have the confidence to believe in yourself that's what i would tell myself because i think if if i had just believed in myself a lot earlier I think you know I, I don't know I, I could have done different things but uh but I'm you know I'm still happy with where I am so it's good <laughs> always well what about yourself Chris is there anything you know any particular wrestler out there that you've uh, had aspirations to have, see some more stuff of or anyone who you might think would be good for rear as a competitor moving forward Ooh, that's a question um I personally because I'd, I'd like to see Rhea up in ICW working with working with Kaylee Ray because um, because I'm a big fan of Kaylee Ray and yes. obviously Ooh, so maybe another new match oh do you know what right so I think I, I think me and Kaylee have only wrestled each other in singles once and it was a fierce female so it was in Scotland and do you know what yeah, we were that was a few years ago wasn't it so it was a few years ago and I was just we were both itching to have another match and I don't think yeah, it hasn't happened. So, you know, maybe once I'm healed up, that could be something that could happen. Oh, there's a big show at the Hydro in November if you're healed oh, up by the... you know. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to give any spoilers just yet. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that, that, I'd, love, I'd love to see that. Um, I, th- I think Kaylee's one of the best, not just in the UK just now, but for me in the world, so... Oh, yeah, absolutely. Any match with her in it is instantly, like enjoyable to watch yeah so ho- hopefully fingers crossed we can see that sometime soon in the future so yeah I, i'd like that someone get that booked <laughs> <laughs> if there's any promoters out there you know what to do well, um, just before obviously we we look to maybe wrap things up Rhea, let's just have another chat about pro wrestling eve tell us what's coming up where they can see you pointing other fingers and not getting people involved in triple threat matches not and essentially <laughs> And point people in the right direction where they can see the pro wrestling Eve work. Yeah, uh, so everything's happening. We've Our next shows are on the 15th of July in Bethnal Green in London at the Resistance Gallery. We've got an afternoon show and an evening show going on. Um, so I think it's uh, 3 p.m. and 7.30 p.m. Uh, tickets are on evewrestling.com. You can get them right right now uh, and on that website you can check out all of our merch including our lovely pile drive a fascist shirt uh, we've also got eve on demand so if you just want to check something out from the comfort of your own home uh, you can get on there and check out some of our previous shows fantastic well you've been a fantastic guest Rhea, and thank you so much for coming on and speaking with us today no problem have a great evening guys <laughs>